Thank you, Matt, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we welcome an exceptional new leader of our Department of Athletics. I don't know if Jim Livingood is here, but I'm going to steal his quote. It's a great day to be a Wildcat. I especially want to thank our student athletes, coaches, and staff who make us proud to be Wildcats each and every day. I also want to thank our passionate supporters who enable our student athletes to strive for excellence. I want to express my appreciation to the Arizona Board of Regents for providing immediate and unequivocal support as we sought to identify and recruit a world-class athletics administrator. I'm also grateful to the very generous donors of this great university whose philanthropic support provided us with the funding that allowed us to secure Desiree and to extend and increase Coach Lloyd's compensation. And a big thank you to Mike Candrea for stepping up during a difficult time. Mike, I see you. Mike, you, you are the GOAT. My biggest, my biggest uh, uh, failure was not to convince you to get one for each thumb, but you've got one for each finger. So thank you for stepping up. We, we owe you a great debt of gratitude, and we all love you, so thank you. This is a critical moment for Arizona athletics. We need someone strong, someone with a national voice, someone with a track record of raising revenue, stewarding resources, and providing strong financial oversight, someone unafraid to come in right now and help us. We are so fortunate that Desiree Reed Francois said yes. She is exactly what we need right now. Desiree comes to us from SEC country, the University of Missouri, where she has spearheaded change in just three short years across all metrics, including on-field performance, academics, fundraising, branding, and innovative initiatives to enhance the student athletic experience. She's been on the cutting edge of NIL and revenue generation, and she always has the student athlete at the center of her work, and that was no more clear to me than the interactions we had yesterday with our incredible students. Her experiences and accolades from a 25-year career in college sports are impressive. And the U of A College of Law, as a U of A College of Law graduate, Desiree knows our community well and continues to stay connected. She was awarded the Alumnus of the Year last year by the College of Law. Dean Miller, thank you for being here and providing that support. And just yesterday, she was a guest speaker at our College of Law interacting with law students. Along with Debs Array, we welcome her husband, Josh Francois, and their son, Jackson, who is currently a sophomore at the University of Missouri suiting up for the men's basketball team. Finally, let me be very clear. We will not shy away from tackling our challenges head on and Desiree will play an integral part in developing the strategies and tactics necessary to succeed in this modern era of college athletics. We will modernize, we will be physically responsible, but we will not compromise on our pursuit of excellence. With new department leadership now in place, our head men's basketball coach secured long-term and Coach Brennan, our new football coach, primed to continue our upward trajectory on the gridiron. And Coach Barnes, who's here, who was that far, that far away from a national championship taking down Stanford. We are set for leadership, stability, and momentum to continue to thrive. Please join me in welcoming our new Director of Athletics, Desiree Reed Francois.
think we had to get a larger jersey for the size of the last name. So, um, but thank you. First, so good, good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you to my student athletes for coming. Grace, it was so wonderful to walk in and see you. So just automatically kind of made things a little more special. So thanks for running from practice. Um, so good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I want to express my sincere gratitude to President Bobby Robbins um, and the Arizona Board of Regents for this incredible opportunity to serve as your director of athletics. Your leadership and your vision, you've set the stage for an incredible future, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Reflecting on my journey uh, to this moment, I wish that you wouldn't have come, Dr. Jordan Curtis. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But it's, it's amazing to see you, so thank you. Um, I'm reminded of a time in my life that solidified my connection to this university. On September 10th of 1994, my brother experienced a life-altering accident. It was my first year in law school uh, here in Tucson, and amidst the chaos and uncertainty, the University of Arizona extended a compassionate hand. providing support when I needed it the most. I am forever grateful. The kindness that was shown to me during this time, um, and now, during this challenging time, it's my privilege and my duty to give back and help guide the athletic department forward. Leaving behind the incredible people and the community at Mizzou was not an easy decision. The student athletes, I gave birth to one of them. Um, the staff, the coaches, uh, incredible people. The President Choi and the Tiger fan base. The SEC, Commissioner Sankey are incredible. And I am forever grateful for the experiences and my friendships that were forged there. They will last a lifetime. However, when the opportunity arose to return to the University of Arizona, the only place I would have considered leaving Mizzou for, I knew it was a chance I could not pass up. I also would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to my husband, Josh, who's here, and my son, Jackson. Thank you for going on this incredible journey with me. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> we came back to the U of A this May um, for graduation ceremonies, and I was telling Josh and Jackson about my time here, and I reflected back to 1997, uh, when we celebrated a national championship in basketball. I remember how exciting it was when, and I remember how I felt when I heard one shining moment and we saw Coach Olson cut down that net. We're gonna raise banners here. We're gonna cut down more nets, folks. And while these are challenging times in college athletics, you know what challenges bring? Challenges bring opportunities. And I am so filled with excitement for the journey ahead. The championship past of this university serves as a testament to the extraordinary talent, the dedication, and the passion that exists within our athletic program. As we move forward, my vision is to build upon this storied history and work tirelessly towards a championship future. I am eager to immerse myself in the vibrant culture of Wildcat ath athletics as it is today in Tucson to get to know our student athletes and to collaborate with each and every one of you to achieve our collective goals. Together, we will strive for excellence, both on and off the field. We'll foster a culture grounded in our core values, guided by our responsibility we have to provide a championship experience on and off the field of play for our student athletes and galvanized by the reality that a successful athletic program, it brings our state and our region together like nothing else and it propels us forward to unparalleled success. In closing, I want to again express my sincere gratitude to President Bobby Robbins, the Arizona Board of Regents and the entire Wildcat community for entrusting me with this incredible opportunity I look forward to hitting the ground running. And Wildcat Nation, please know, I will work very hard every single day to make you proud. Thank you, and bear down, Arizona.
Dr. Rollins, Craig Ford, ABC 15 Arizona. Just, you mentioned earlier in, in the release yesterday, too, just about donors stepping up and helping fund all these things that are going on right now. Can you speak more to that and how you've been able to garner that support financially? Yeah, I, I think, Craig, uh, we're incredibly blessed here. As you know, in November, we uh, entered into the public phase of our Fuel Wonder campaign. Uh, the goal is $3 billion. We're already uh, $2.2 billion toward that goal, and I'm confident we'll exceed our goal. As, as part of our strategic plan and part of that fundraising uh, campaign, athletics and the fine arts are two front porches to this great university are part of it. And so I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful to all the donors who stepped up and made the commitments when we needed to uh, have them do so, so that we didn't have to use university funds uh, to continue to um, fuel the wonder of our athletics department. Uh, Desiree Jack Bartlett, Cronkite News. Uh, I think it was about a month ago, there was a, an anonymous $62 million donation made to University of Mizzou Athletics Department. I'm just curious how you were able to cultivate not only a strong NIL collective at Mizzou, but also cultivate a strong fan base that uh, donates generously. Hi, thank you, nice to meet you. Um, Yes, and that call yesterday, I was actually with the dean, you know, I, was, I spoke to the law school yesterday, and I was with the dean when I called that donor to tell him about me leaving. So thank you, um, you weren't, this, so it was like surprise, here I'm here. Uh, but thank you for, for driving yesterday and being a part of that. Um, how we were able to cultivate that gift, um, that particular supporter is an incredible supporter, incredible person that just genuinely cares about the University of Missouri. Um, it was a really difficult call to make yesterday um, because I, I know he believed in the direction and the trajectory, um, but I know he still believes. And the University of Missouri is an incredible place, um, and they are on a great path, and I cannot wait to cheer for them from afar. Um, how, we cultivate, how we cultivate donors is one person at a time. We uh, do what we say we're going to do. Um, we live our core values. We get to know people and find out where their passion lies and align those passions with what the department's needs are and how we can propel us forward into the future. So I love fundraising because you get a chance to be able to meet people where they are, hear their stories, and everybody has this incredible story um, and incredible memories. Um, and it, like I said, when I, I was here in law school in 97 when we won the national championship, I bet there's a lot of people in this room that remember how the, where they were and how they felt. So aligning memories um, with passions uh, for philanthropy, it's, it's really special. Thank you for asking. You know, one thing, if I can just add a little bit more, you asked about, I think I didn't um, answer your fan question. Uh, when it comes to, I'm really big on listening. Uh, I haven't been to a Wildcat football game since in like 1997. It's been, a, I have a lot to learn and a lot of listening to do, and I cannot wait to do that. Uh, if to our fans that are listening uh, right now, I apologize on the front end, I send out a lot of surveys. Um, I love surveys and then what we do is we're gonna respond to those surveys and we're gonna make adjustments because we wanna provide a game day atmosphere that's second to none. And we can't do that unless we hear about your experiences and then we make adjustments. So uh, it, Fans bring this incredible energy. I can't wait to meet our students too. Students bring this vibrancy that is so incredibly special that cannot be replicated, but it all starts with listening to our people first. Hi, uh, Bruce Pasco, Arizona Daily Star. I guess this is kind of for both of you, but I'm wondering, I think it, uh, Dr. Robbins, you said there was a 30 million in philanthropy last year. And I guess I was wondering, what is your, what is your goal for that number to get to, and does the extra donor funds for these two contracts come out, potentially come out of that 30 million? Do you expect it to grow? Um, you know, what, what is that, especially considering the, the, the current situation? Yeah, Bruce, I'm not familiar with the 30 million you're talking about. Can you clarify? You were quoted on it in our, I think, faculty senate. 
according to what we have. Oh, uh, there's a $30 million deficit in the so, Department of Athletics. No, it was the philanthropy as part of your revenues for uh, fiscal 22, I believe. Well, I don't, I don't remember the quote, but you've obviously got it. Uh, I, I think what I probably said, Bruce, is that because we have a $30 million deficit in the Department of Athletics, we need to grow revenue. One way that that works is increasing philanthropy. And so, uh, you know, a $30 million goal for philanthropy. We have the, the data on our fundraising compared to our Big 12 peers that we're going to be transitioning into in July. So I think a $30 million a year uh, goal will be, uh, will be a good one to have, but I'm going to let the boss, you know, uh, say what she thinks the goal should be. She may think it's 50. I don't, I don't know, but, but I think that's the context of which I uh, made the comment about yeah. 30 million. Yeah, I just ha I have an older, the, one of the NCAA reports, and I think it was 20 million back a few years ago, so I assumed it maybe went up, and I was just wondering, you know, do you, do you kind of think maybe it could even get to 40 or 50 in the next few years, or what, what are the, you know, did the goals get even bigger? Yeah, well, again, I'll, I'll let Desiree uh, make a comment specifically around athletics. I can tell you that we have a $3 billion goal that, as I said before, I am confident we're going to exceed. Athletics is a big part of that. Uh, we've already had tremendous support from our donors uh, uh, to support the athletics programs, and, uh, and I think it will continue to grow, especially under Desiree's leadership. Dr. Robbins, Anthony Remedios, Cronkite News. Can you take us through the, search, the process of finding a new AD, especially in such a quick time fashion? Was there a search firm involved or anything like that? There was not a search firm involved, but uh, as I said in my remarks, um, the regents uh, have been very supportive of going out and, uh, and finding an absolute world-class talent that we did. We found the best person that I think uh, fits our culture, understands our culture, and has a proven track record of success. I talked to hundreds of people around the country, um, talked to many different presidents, uh, corporate leaders, donors, uh, other athletic directors, coaches, uh, people from the business community, uh, and that led us every time to Desiree. So I'm incredibly grateful that you said yes and you're bringing your talents back to Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, uh, Michael Lev with the Arizona Daily Star. This question is for uh, Desiree. Dr. Robbins mentioned the $30 million deficit that uh, athletics has been running, and your, according to your bio, you were able to kind of turn things around financially at Mizzou. How were you able to do that, and what are some of the plans you have uh, conceived of to turn things around financially here uh, at Arizona? Thank you, and I'm sorry, could you tell me your name again? I just didn't. It's Michael Lev with the Arizona Daily Michael, Star. Michael, nice to meet you. Uh, and so in terms of, oh, he was making a motion. So. <laughs> no, no, uh, in terms of how we're gonna turn it around, we are, challenges are opportunities. I said that in my opening remarks. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, fit, we're gonna dive into that budget. I talked to the all department, uh, the staff yesterday, and we talked about priorities that we have for the kind of first couple months. And one of those priorities is that we've gotta dive into that budget and figure out where we are, where there's opportunities for growth, do some data analytics, look at where do we compare with the rest of our big 12 comparators. Um, and then kind of if there's, when, where there's opportunities for growth, then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do it and let's look at our protocols, look at our best practices. It's the same thing we did uh, at Missouri as well. Um, I haven't met very many athletic departments that say, hey, we've got so much money, we don't know what to do with it. So this is not a, a problem that's incredibly unique. But what we have to do is just be very diligent in our approach and very thoughtful Let's listen and let's learn and let's analyze and put together the best plan and move forward. And by the way, if I may say, I was a little awkward at, in my opening remarks when I saw Dean Jordan Curtis. Um, thank you very much for being here. She was um, one of the deans when I was in law school. And one of the reasons why I'm here today is because of how she um, helped me. So thank you. Hi, 
Hi, Desiree. Welcome to Tucson. Matt Reynoldson with KVOA here in town. I uh, wanted to ask you about how you approach your relationship with student athletes, because obviously there are hundreds of student athletes here. You're obviously starting that and started it last night at McHale. But what's your philosophy overall on connecting with individuals and then connecting with your coaches as well? It's the best part of what I do. It is my, we talked about it yesterday. And uh, when I'm having a hard day, um, Maybe when I'm analyzing the budget, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, when I'm having a hard day, uh, I'll go over to the um, to the cafeteria where the student athletes eat the training table, and I just go. They don't know this yet, but I just go and sit down with random teams, and I, I do this like once every two weeks, and I listen to them, and I hear about their their hopes and their dreams, and it's the best part of what we do. I'm in this business because um, I know about how the student athlete experience impacts people's lives. Uh, I couldn't fix my brother, um, but I can make sure that every single one of these student athletes have a world-class experience. But that world-class experience, I can't give that to them if I don't listen to them. And I, I love, that's just the best part of what I do. So we do it in a very, um, in an informal way in terms of I go and I, I have lunch with them. Uh, I meet with our SAC and then once a week I have a party of five, or I'm sorry, once a month I have a party of five luncheon, which are academic advisors. I shared this with them yesterday. We get five student athletes from all different teams and we go and we have lunch and there's no agenda, but I always end it with, if you were athletic director for the day, what's something that you would do? So, and they also are gonna get a bunch of surveys too because I, I need their feedback. We gotta be on this together. Thank you for asking. Uh, Dr. Robbins and uh, uh, Director Fr Reed Francois, David Kelly from Wildcats Radio 1290. Uh, for Dr. Robbins, just I know the, the, the talk in terms of the rebound for the entire university has been 18 to 36 months. Is that the same timeline you're looking for for this athletic rebound as well? And for um, Dr. Reed Francois, for those of us that don't know the story of your brother, um, and what is that? Is that KTUC, by the way? Uh, no, that's uh, KCUB. K well, well, they're in the family with us. KTUC is one of our stations, yes. Uh, but KCUB is 1290. Awesome. I used to intern there way back when. So. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, the story of my brother. Um, my brother played football at Chabot Junior College. He was a Prop 48 back then, which um, he was a linebacker had bad grades, and so he didn't go off to a four-year right off, um, right after college, and, or right after high school. So he went to Chabot um, on September 10th of 1994. He was going for um, the record of the most tackles uh, in the state of California at the time. He made the tackle, he wrapped up his running back, and uh, it, he was on the ground, and someone just hit his neck and snapped his neck, and he became a quadriplegic. And Dr. Robbins, uh, just the timeline of when you want to see the rebound for athletics, and is that in line with what we've heard in terms of the university's 18 to 36 month plan? Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, we're going to have to be patient. Uh, these things don't turn around overnight. There's a whole confluence of factors that came together to uh, get us where we are across the university, and that's the same for athletics. So I think we want to be patient. Um, and we, we've got to let Desiree come in and uh, do her uh, uh, analysis and, uh, and, and get a plan together. Um, I am confident we've got the right person to do that, and I would not be surprised at all. I've learned uh, that Desiree is very competitive, and so I think that she will get this turned around very quickly. There's some structural issues that um, I think we've been discussing that uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's fairly nuanced, but there are some things that I think will help uh, with athletics that um, have been uh, cost in the past that my, my hope is that we can work with her to, uh, to correct going forward, but I, I absolutely am confident she will get this turned around and she'll beat the 18 to 36 month uh, time frame. So I can see you. Oh, good morning, Desiree. Uh, it's been a minute since I saw you in Sacramento about 11 months ago uh, for, the, for the tournament. Uh, how has the year been for you? And you left a pretty good situation to get here. Could you talk about that last maybe 11 months? Certainly. Uh, and just to follow up a little bit on your question, um, we're going to, 
it, it can't be all just me, right? We're gonna, we have a lot of talent, we have so much talent in that athletic department, in our athletic department, and I look forward to linking arms with everyone and coming up with those solutions. So just to follow up, um, nice to see you. And over the last, we were um, both in the Sacramento uh, NCAA tournament regional. And so the last 11 months have been, oh gosh, it's gone by really, really quickly. Um, we had a pretty good football season. We had a great, we had a pretty good volleyball season. We hired a, a you wanted me to go, to go over what's going on at Missouri in the last 11 well, months? Just, just you left a pretty good situation. Oh, oh, okay. And the reasoning why. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question very well. Um, let's, it's home. Just quite simply, it's home. I talked about, and uh, you know, I got a little bit emotional on, uh, at the podium because it, this is a heart move. This is a move um, that I know what the University of Arizona can be. I know there are challenges, but I know we have incredible support. We have incredible leadership. And I felt like the University of Arizona was there for me when I needed them. And now my skill sets, uh, I believe, meet what the University of Arizona needs at this point at this time, at this critically important time, um, when there are so many challenges throughout college athletics. And not only, not only here at the University of Arizona, but throughout, throughout the entire enterprise. So it just felt right, and it was an opportunity to, to come home. Hi, Desiree. Welcome back to Tucson. I'm John Macluso with 13 News. I talked to a student yesterday, a tennis player here at the university, and she couldn't be more hyped to have a woman come in to take over the job. Can you just talk a little bit about what it means to you to be inspirational to students like her? You know, I, I'm smiling. I, I was over at the law school yesterday, and someone asked me this question, too. And, you know, when I was at, first of all, do you, what was her name? What did you meet? Uh, her name was Awesome. Well, I can't wait to spend some time with her. Uh, you know, when I was at the university, when, at UNLV, um, I used to get that question and posed to me, and I, quite frankly, I was a little flippant, and I would say, "Well, I don't know how to be a man, so I'm just going to be a leader." And and then uh, so, <laughs> maybe I should go back to that line. I don't know. Uh, uh, but then, you know, I, I went to Missouri, and there were a lot of firsts there, right? And I, uh, I met with our soccer team, um, and there was a young lady that was from California, and she was also, uh, she was also Mexican, um, like I am, and she, and she saw me, and she kind of teared up, and I, and I said, you know, I, where are the tears coming from? And she said, well, I just had never thought of someone that looked like me would be in the chair that you're in. And so I thought, you know what, I need to be a little more thoughtful in that response. Um, my hope is that when my son Jackson has a, grand, has, a, has a daughter and I have a granddaughter, which will not be for a very, very long time. <laughs> Let me be very crystal clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I hope that my future granddaughter, when she is a successful CEO, that she is asked, what is it like to be a successful CEO? not what is it like to be a female CEO. Brian, and then Jenna. Hi, uh, Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. Uh, Desiree, you're <clears throat> inheriting a uh, coaching staff just renewed or extended the men's basketball coach, just hired a new football coach. But just overall, how do you go about evaluating head coaches, uh, their performance, and, and decisions about whether or not to continue with them, um, and maybe what you did at Missouri and UNLV in that same standpoint? It, it's really quite simple. Plan and, a prog and progress. And then we're going to partner together. I'm going to give you the resources and build excellence around your programs so you can be successful. That's what we've got to do. Um, so I look for coaches to have a plan, show progress. And then we, uh, and then, hey, I always ask our coaches, what is it that you need to be successful? How can I best help support you? And that's what our department's going to do, right? We're going to have to provide excellence around all of our programs because we all take a lot of pride and we all have a really important par point or part in, in achieving the excellence that we all expect. But 
every single person that works in that athletic department, they have an incredibly important role. And we all contribute to those. When Coach Ol Olson cut down those nets, it wasn't him by himself. I bet you if he was up here, he would tell you in a very much more eloquent way than I'm telling you. I can just picture his voice and he would say it um, with such dignity. But he would probably tell you that every single person contributed to winning that national championship. You know, I had the good fortune of working at the, the University of Tennessee um, and I, uh, I was on the men's side, but I got to know Coach Summit, and she was this this incre incredible role model. And I I asked her once. I said, Coach, how did you like? What was the key, what were some of the keys to your success? And she said, alignment. You have to have alignment. You have to have your university leadership. So your president. So you asked me about um, back that you asked me a little bit about why I came too, and I talked about the feeling and the home. But I also know, like, I ha we have to have alignment. For us to win national championships, you got to have alignment with your president, your athletic director, your coaches, your community, all of our student athletes and staff. We cannot do it by ourselves. So we have to have that. That alignment is critically important. All right. We'll go to Jenna and then Jason. Jenna Fing from KVOA. So uh, welcome back to Tucson. You've certainly had a lot of accomplishments over your time at Mizzou and UNLV. What are you most proud of as an athletic director? Just the people and the culture. Yeah. Um, the culture that we were able to build, um, and that wasn't, that wasn't me, that was all of us working together. But culture is so critically important, and that, um, that just fills my heart. Hi, Jason Barr, KGA9. Welcome back here to uh, to Tucson. Just uh, one question, if you could just um, be specific on something. Uh, you mentioned um, that the university was there for you, and then you mentioned what happened to your brother. Did you um, have a mentor or somebody who, who helped you, or did you take time off? Could you just please be a little bit more specific on that? Well, Dean Jordan Curtis, um, like every week she would check in on me. Uh, all of my professors, actually, from Professor Maui to, uh, um, yeah, all, God, goodness, uh, Dean Massaro, she wasn't our dean yet, it was Dean uh, Henderson uh, was, our, was our dean, but every, everybody in the administration um, to my professors, they all like checked in to make sure I was doing okay. Uh, and, and so it just really meant a lot. Um, I felt very um, seen and cared for. And, and I didn't take the semester off. What I would do is, um, Roman's accident happened in San Francisco Bay Area, and then I, his rehabilitation hospital was in uh, Palm Springs. So every weekend, I would drive, like I would finish, I think I only had a Thursday classes, and I would drive on Friday morning um, to Palm Springs to, to help my family and then drive back on Sundays. Hello, Desiree. Uh, Troy Hutchison, GoEasyCats.com. Um, one, when you got that phone call from President Robbins, take me through that moment. And then two, uh, you talked about creating a culture. What is that culture and what are you looking for specifically with that? I um, had to pause for a moment and because it was, it was like a dream come true to come back to the University of Arizona and to be able to lead the department at this moment in time. Um, I was thinking about my son and my husband, and so I wanted to talk with them. Um, you know, my son's a student athlete at, at Missouri, and he's on the basketball team, and I apologize, this is an early, I apologize we're all, all a little crowded in this room. Um, I feel like I need to talk really fast because we need to circulate some air. Uh, but, <laughs> and, but my son has a game tonight, so like the, the press conference is at nine o'clock in the morning because we gotta get the kid back to, you know, get <laughs> some kind of pregame warm up. Um, uh, <laughs> it's just a practical reality of my life. Uh, and so, you know, that, that weighed on me a little bit, right? My, it's pretty special to, to be able to walk across the court and see my son um, play basketball. So that, that weighed on me, but I just thought this, is, this just feels right. And so we all talked about it as a family, um, and my husband was there encouraging me, and he's like, this is going to be great. And so we were excited, and we said a, a really strong heck yes. Uh, and then you asked about building culture. Um, 
So it, it all starts with your people. And it, I think your culture, it's res relationships and then results. When we hire, we want to hire people, and we talked about this yesterday at the all department meeting. Uh, you hire people of high character, and by high character, I'm looking for selfless, smart, hard workers, low ego, high outcome and energy. You have to believe, right? So I guess if it all starts with your people, but your people have to believe. They have to believe in themselves. They have to believe in the vision. The vision will be to be a modern model of intercollegiate athletics. They have to believe in, in me. I have to believe in them. And we have to believe in one another. So you start with your belief, and then you've got to execute. I'm a little obsessive with details, um, but I think details are the difference between wins and losses, as we all know. Um, but you got to execute really effectively. You got to work really, really hard. And then you got to evolve the evolution because this is an ever changing landscape. So you got to be able to be um, flexible to be able to say, hey, you know what? This is changing this way. So let's, let's pivot and let's adjust on the fly. Uh, I think, Dr. Robbins, I think you've said the 87 million in loans to athletics might be, might not ever be repaid back. I was just wondering if you two had a plan for any of that or if it, it, if it will be forgiven or if that's part of the analysis to, to repay any of it. Yeah, I think uh, we've, we've had a lot of conversations, Bruce, with uh, John Arnold and our team about that. Um, Desiree and I haven't spoken about that particular issue, um, but I, I know that she looks forward with meeting with uh, John Arnold and Matt Hayes and better understanding the, the finances of the department and a plan that she'll come up with uh, to work to, uh, uh, to get back to not only just break even, but positive. And, and I'm confident that we, we can get there. Uh, a, a lot of it will, you know, it, it's just like uh, the national debt. You can grow your way out of it, you can cut your way out of it, or you can tax your way out of it. And uh, so there's going to have to be components of um, revenue growth. And it's funny, um, people come to events when you win. So winning is a, uh, is a great equalizer in this whole equation. Uh, but there'll have to be some restructuring. Uh, and and the, the loans will, we, we give loans across the university all the time. And so we'll have to, we'll have to work with Desiree and her team to figure out what, what that means. Usually these loans are given like all of the, uh, uh, the improvements of the football stadium, the new softball stadium, uh, the, the, the renovations of the pool, improvements that were made at High Corbett, all of those uh, are loans that were given to the athletic department, an inter uh, 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 internal loan, and they've been paying them back. I think the debt service on those loans are about $15 million a year currently. So we'll have to sit down and it is a holistic approach to the, to the athletics budget as well as the whole university budget. We, we will have a plan and, and I uh, feel confident in that 18 to 36 month time frame we'll, we'll be on, on good solid ground. And if I could follow up, Desiree, I was just wondering, I was reading about all the fundraising you've done at Missouri, but also there was a change possibly with some oversight there, and I was wondering what role that played in your decision to leave, and, and do you expect the oversight situation to be different here? No, that, that didn't. The, uh, I came to the University of Arizona not leaving University of Missouri. I came to the University of Arizona because I'm just so excited to come home. Uh, hi, Desiree. Uh, Matt Morris from the UA's Alumni Magazine. Um, I know you were a rower at UCLA back in the day. Can you talk about your experiences as a student athlete and uh, how those experiences um, influence the way you work as an AD? I'm, I was a walk-on rower, um, not terribly coordinated, just work really hard. <laughs> and and I, um, I'm actually really excited about triathlon here. Like we were talking to the triathlon coach yesterday and uh, kind of want to do an Ironman. But, um, <laughs> but that might require a lot of coordination and I haven't looked at the bye week and it's going to take me more than like nine months to get ready. So I got a lot of work to do, so I'm, I'm not like <laughs> calling my shot yet. But uh, 
athletics, ever since I was three years old and played my first soccer match, um, athletics has been a huge part of my life. I wouldn't be sitting here in this chair if it, athletics provided me an opportunity to compete and it was okay. Um, you weren't judged uh, because you were so competitive in a negative way. Um, you weren't told not to, um, you know, not to compete. You were encouraged and I loved it and it played to my inner DNA. Uh, but I also wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for higher education. I come from, my dad was an eighth grade English te teacher. My mom was a school secretary. We grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and uh, the importance of education has just been a part of my life. Like I, I, um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. And so I, every day I come to work with a grateful heart that I get to do something so beautiful as to work in college, college athletics, um, but also be a part of young people's journey. I mean, they're 18 to 22 and I get to be a part of, of that special moment in time. So very grateful to be here and thank you for your question. Thanks. Yes, Michael Lev with the Arizona Daily Star. Two questions for you, I'll ask them one at a time. The first one is there's obviously been a lot of change in the world of college athletics over the last five years or so. How has the, the job of athletics director changed within that context? I think the job of the athletic director is, is changing almost like every month, right? Well, actually not the job, but the landscape of college athletics is changing almost every month. Um, you have Supreme Court decisions, you have conference changes. I mean, I grew up in the Pac-10, Pac and then it was the Pac-12, and now it's not. Um, it, so it's ever-changing. And when I talked about what I looked for to be able to hire, you look for selfless, smart, hard workers, and you have to be able to pivot, right? You have to be able to be flexible, because that it, our enterprise is constantly evolving. But it also, that's what makes it kind of exciting, too. Right? Instead of just looking at it and complaining about, oh gosh, I remember pre-NIL, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Like, actually seize it as an opportunity because it's a great thing and jump on that and use it as a competitive advantage. So how has the athletic director role changed? I mean, we're CEOs of a $140 million company. And so we need to treat the enterprise like that. It's highly regulated. It's, high, it's um, highly scrutinized but it also has an altruistic purpose of higher education, and we need to make sure that we tether, continue to tether athletics to the academy. Okay, and the last one is um, one avenue that you could possibly pursue to cut costs is to maybe reduce the number of sports programs that Arizona has. I believe it's 22, and I think the average in the Big 12 is around 17. Is that something that's on the table for you? No. And I think Coach Candrea had a really good quote. Was it last week, Coach? Yeah, last week. And Coach and uh, President Robbins told me about it, and I loved it. I think it, now I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it, so I can kick it to you. But what I think that you said was something along the lines that you hope the Big 12 gets up to the University of Arizona standards. Is that something like that? Close. Yeah. All right. Well, I like his answer is way better than mine, <laughs> but it's the same sentiment. So thank you. And thank you very much for leading the department. And I have, uh, I had the good fortune of hiring one of your former players in Christy Fox. And she, you taught her well. She's an incredible coach and, and yeah, great alum. All right. Thank you everyone for coming. All right, that is the <laughs>